What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Sweet tea, be quiet, sir. Sorry, sir. Anyway, we got UFC 300 coming up. Hopefully, you guys will be tuning in, and I'm gonna give you some really important information at the end of this video, so stay tuned. But anyway, we got Justin Gaethje on the card. Shout out to my man, Justin Gaethje. We're gonna be breaking down his fight with Dustin Poirier, too. Let's get into the video. What up, everybody? Everybody, what's up, everybody? <laughs> All right, you guys, this is UFC Utah. Actually, I was supposed to fight on this car. I was supposed to fight Michelle Pajera, but somebody didn't make weight. But I did check out this fight, and it was sick, man. I didn't see this fight going the way it went. Nobody saw this happening, but we're going to break it down step by step. Ooh, baby. Let's get into it right now. Pressing start and ba-blam. Round to the flipping one. A lot of these guys, Justin Gaethje switched his size. Dustin Poirier mostly keeps his right side forward. I gotta say, Dustin, it looks tanned up right now. You know what I mean? Summertime, got that summertime tanned up. Now, let me pause this for a second. Just to let you guys know something. Whenever you are fighting, having a tan actually helps. There have been a ton of fights, kickboxing and MMA, where I wanted to get tanned up. Why, you say? Number one, just looks better. Two, it's very difficult for the judges to see bumps, bruises on the body during the fight. If you're super pale and you're taking a lot of damage, especially to the legs, it shows a lot more when you don't have a tan. So it's a great way to hide damage, just to let you guys know that. Both in an open stance. Gaethje's got left side forward, Dustin's got right side forward. This is kind of perfect, good outside leg kick from Gaethje. Gaethje's known for his leg kicks, man. I've seen a ton of outside the UFC fights where he just kills dudes with leg kicks and they gave up. Ooh, good pull. Oh man, great way to keep yourself off of the cage. Go at them. When guys are trying to get you to the cage, great way to get off of the cage is to go at your opponent. Here we go. Both guys are throwing left hands, throwing right hands, pulling twos. All right, good answer there. I love the boxing from these guys. Both these guys got great boxing. I thought Dustin was just gonna outbox Gaethje here. All right, he beat him before. Great boxing. There's another There's another leg kick there from Gaethje. Poirier's not liking those leg kicks. He's got to check a few of them, man. He's got to check it. Now Poirier's kind of moving side to side, making it a little bit more difficult for Justin uh, Gaethje to beat, up on, to beat up on him. Very hard to hit a moving target. You got to stay moving. Man, relentless with that outside leg kick there. Dude, both of these guys are just so on point, man. The best of the best. Good front kick to the body. Oh, he even does, does look like, listen, Poirier is still a great one. Dude, he's throwing some hammers to the body. Right into Justin's forearm. All right, Justin's. Man, Justin does, I'm gonna say Gaethje and Poirier. Right into Gaethje's forearms, which don't feel good at all. Sometimes I'll throw, ooh, good, good pull in two. Sometimes I'll, I will deliberately throw a kick to the, to, the, to the leg. Dude, first head kick right there. Nobody expects Gaethje to throw a head kick. I mean, he doesn't throw a whole lot of them, to be honest with you. A lot of heavy body kicks, a lot of heavy leg kicks. So that surprised me in this first round when I first saw this. Let's go. It, it looks like Dustin's a little frustrated right now. Always pulling his pants up, kind of messing with his pants there. Ooh, what was that, a little hammer fist? Now, this is where you gotta take advantage of it. Keeping them, good counter too, by Gaethje. But Dustin's gotta keep them on that fence. When you get somebody there, you don't let them off. You gotta keep them there. It limits their movement. This is where Dustin's gotta keep them. Another outside leg kick. Look at him, Dustin looks, looks really frustrated right now. Man, he's just answering back. Gaethje's got really good boxing, man. Really good boxing. When he gets hit, he's coming back with three or four punches. Ooh. Well, got a little power about fell on his face on that one. Good two by, by uh, Poirier. Both of these guys are looking at their face or seeing if they're cut or not. Oh my goodness, oh! Hurt him, hurt Gaethje, hurt. Hurt him, it hurt him. I feel like Gaethje doesn't really get started until he's almost knocked out. <laughs> Good jab by Gaethje. But that two hurt him. Now Dustin can't let him off here, he's gotta stay on him. Another, another, another. Try to, try to kick him to the body hard there. You gotta stay on him, man, stay on him. Poirier let him off. He had him hurt, now he's letting him recover. Oh, nice right hand. I love to watch these guys boxing, man. 
These guys are slipping, moving, getting hit, answering back with two or three punches. Both guys, great boxers, which is why the outcome was so surprising, actually. Still, a lot of guys, these guys are not switching sides at all. Let me pause this for a second. This is why you gotta learn, in my eyes, why you gotta learn to fight both sides. If you're taking a lot of damage to one leg, you gotta spread that damage out across the fight. If you keep that right side forward and you keep taking damage to that one leg, it's gonna shorten the fight. You're gonna take more damage to that leg and, and next thing you know, you're not gonna be able to move at all. But if you're able to spread out the damage by switching sides, take some damage to the other leg or to the right leg and be able to switch, number one, it's gonna throw your opponent off but you spread that damage out. So you're not gonna get stopped as fast. But Dustin's not switching sides. He's trying to, but he can't do it. He's not used to switching, I believe. I love Dustin, though. Poirier's the man. Gaethje's the man, what the flip. I love both of these guys. Can't wait for this UFC 300 fight with Gaethje, bro. It's gonna be sick. Oh my goodness, I thought I was gonna lean into that head kick. Gaethje bent down and Dustin threw that kick high. Barely missed him. Another outside leg kick from Gaethje. Wear and tear. Look, uh, now, 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 now Poirier's trying to switch sides, but he's like, I can't do it. Gotta keep my right side forward. Ooh, another head kick by Gaethje. Gaethje's thinking, man. He's thinking. He's setting something up. Good left hand. Ooh, another right hand. Ooh, man. Round one over. Golly, I thought Gaethje was gonna get stopped there for a second because he got smoked. Poirier knew he was hurt, but he let him off. Why? But I tell you what though, uh, Gaethje's got some sick leg kicks. Heavy, heavy leg kicks. Round two, baby, coming up. Now right here, both still in an open stance, which is gonna make the outcome a little bit, you know, easier. Makes more sense. I'll explain it later. Now throughout this entire thing, Gaethje's been leading with his right hand a lot. First round, leading with his right hand, leading with his right hand. Not a whole lot of jabs, but pulling twos. Poirier's trying to get him back to the cage, trying to use that, get that jab. So he's just kind of, not really jabbing, but sticking it out there to try to find his range. But Gaethje's always moving side to side. Look at that, boom. Another, another leg kick there, another leg kick. Getting, getting Poirier to think down low. I don't know if this was the game plan all along. See how he's, see how he's leading with his two? It's gonna make more sense here at the end. Ooh, okay, a little faint there, a little faint by Gaethje. Poye still just kind of plotting down, just kind of walking Gaethje down. Gaethje's got, he knows that Dustin is gonna throw punches, so he's keeping his head moving, making it harder. Boom, boom, there it is. Oh, oh, did you see the referee? He like, he like cannonballed, bro. Cannonball. This is why it worked so well. One, open stance. That back leg head kick, you have no shoulder there to protect yourself. If you were in a close stance, let's say left foot, left foot, if you do the head kick, it's gonna be easier for me to kinda hide behind the shoulder, right? All I gotta do is lean a little bit, you hit the shoulder glances off. But from an open stance, there's not a whole lot of shoulder there to protect. And getting hit right in the neck, bro, will put anybody to sleep. Poirier did block it, he did block it. But he didn't bring his shoulder up enough, so the shin hit here, but the foot also hit behind the head or even the neck, and that's what put him to sleep. Now another reason why this thing was perfect, the whole first round, Gaethje was leading with the right hand. Now if you notice, anytime somebody throws a right hand, you wanna parry it and you lean one direction. For instance, the Leon Edwards and Usman fight. He probably watched this fight before he fought Poirier. He threw the two, you slip, here comes the kick, and then you try to counter back with a parry there, already leaning into the kick, making it that much more powerful. Two, parries it, boom, head kick. Look at me, he used that hand to parry it. The head kick was there. Textbook, hats off to both of these guys. Gaethje, UFC 300, you know it's going to be a war. BMF belt on the line. We're gonna be doing some more UFC 300 breakdowns leading up to this fight. Now, surprise at the end, guys, I'm gonna let y'all know. For UFC 300, me and Sweet Tea will be going live. So make sure you guys come and join us on the channel, watching with us, commentating with us. We're gonna be letting you guys know our thoughts on the fight. We want, we want you there, we want you present. We want you guys to hang out with us for UFC 300. We're gonna be going for the main card. So hopefully you guys will come check us out. Thanks for joining me for this breakdown. Love you guys. Make sure you guys tune in. Peace. <laughs>